In this video, I wanna answer some questions that were left in the comments of my initial review of the Velocirax vertical bike rack. I can't cover everything in one video, so there are a couple things I wanna add, again, based on the questions. The first thing that I wanna mention, and this isn't really answering a question, but this is just something I thought of while using this rack. One of the great benefits of this rack is how quickly you can load bikes. However, you do wanna be careful that when you load the bike, you do it slowly. So what I do is I keep my knee kind of on the saddle so that I don't allow the bike to sway back and forth as I'm loading it. I just kind of, once I get it up on the wheel tray, I just kind of let it in there slowly. Again, that way the pedal from the bike that you're loading doesn't sway back and forth. So even though you can load bikes really quickly on this, you still don't wanna just hoist it up there without thinking about that bike swaying back and forth and hitting the other bike. All right, now let me answer a few questions that were left on my first video. All right, so the first question I'm gonna answer is how far off the back of the vehicle does the rack sit? So if you measure from kind of where the, the base of the rack is, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna compare it to my Kuat NV 2.0 rack. So kind of the center of that bar to the very back, which is gonna be the saddle, and the saddle is fully extended, it's 102 centimeters. Now, the benefit of this rack is most of the weight of the bike is going to be a lot closer to the car. So if I measure from that bar to kind of the, let's say where the shock is, which is where most of your weight's gonna be, so there you're only talking about 49 centimeters. So. If you're just carrying one or two bikes, that doesn't really matter. But if you're carrying three or four or five or six or seven bikes, then it really matters because no matter how many bikes you load on this rack, the bulk of the weight is going to be a lot closer to the vehicle than a traditional four bike rack like a Kuat NV 2.0, where you've got the bike, the last bike sitting way far out here. And when I measured how far the Kuat NV 2.0 four bike rack, I measured to be 108 centimeters. So that's gonna be about right here. So past the saddle is where the last bike is gonna be. And if that's an enduro bike, you've got a lot more leverage. So that's a really good question. And one that I really didn't mention in that first video, and that is most of the weight of the bikes is gonna be closer to the vehicle. And that's especially important if you're carrying e-bikes. So like I said in that first video, this bike rack can carry four e-bikes. And for four e-bikes, that's a lot of weight. But again, it's all going to be about 49, 50 centimeters for the, you know, the center, the bulk of the weight of those bikes. Another great question about this rack that I did not mention in the first video is, can I lift the tailgate of the car, my SUV, with the bike rack on? And the answer is yes. So if you drop it down, so I'm gonna hit this little lever and we'll drop the rack down. Little drop down slowly. I'm gonna, I've only got three bikes on here, so I'm gonna help it out a little bit here. Those dampers are really strong. And then if I lift the tailgate of my vehicle, you'll see that I've got a ton of clearance between the tailgate and the tire. So great question, and the answer is yes, you can easily raise the tailgate, I would imagine, of most vehicles because you saw I had a lot of clearance on that one. Another question that I will answer, and it doesn't really relate to this rack, but it is a good question. Someone asked me if I've ever used a roof rack. The answer is yes, a lot of times. Back in the, oh gosh, I won't even say how far back, I had a really nice Yakima roof rack and carried over until when I got married. And someone drove into the garage with the bikes on top, not just once, but two times. I'm not gonna mention any names. And so I got rid of the roof rack and I started using hitch racks. I think the only downside to a hitch rack is that if you get rear-ended, that's not a good thing with bikes in the back. Every other situation, gas mileage, ease of loading the bikes, taking the thing on and off the vehicle. Bottom line is yes, I've used a roof rack and I'll take any hitch rack over a roof rack any day. Now, speaking of gas mileage, which I just mentioned, that's one thing that I really don't know about this rack. The bulk of the bikes are gonna be down lower. Uh, what is sticking above the car are the wheels. 
So with a traditional rack, like the Kuat NV 2.0, Saris, 1UP, all those, the bikes are gonna sit lower. And so with an SUV especially, you've got more car that can block. But you know, at this point, I don't, it's, it's so, it would be so hard to tell, but that is a consideration, the fact that you have wheels sticking up above the roof of a car, which you don't have, like again, with the Kuat Envy. Now it's nothing like the roof racks that we used to use where the entire bike, wheels, frame, everything was above. And you know, you really didn't get great gas mileage in that situation. So I don't think it'd be too bad with this, but it is just something I've thought about. If any of y'all have used this rack and done some kind of gas mileage comparison, I don't know how you'd scientifically do that. It'd be hard to prove unless it was just drastically different, which I don't think it would be. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Someone else asked, can you put 20 and 24 inch wheel bikes? In other words, BMX and BMX Cruiser. The answer is for 24, yes. For 20, probably not, but maybe. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna take these bikes off and then I'll put on my Redline Cruiser, which is a 24, of course. And then I'll put on my son's BMX 20 inch race bike. And I'll show you that you do have some contact issue with the fork. On the right, I've got my 24 inch red line and that's no problem at all. The wheel does hit the back of the tray here, stays in there real securely. The back tire contacts the bottom bar nicely. So no problem there with the 24 inch. The 20 inch is where you have an issue. So the fork contacts the wheel tray, the right side of the wheel tray without the back tire going over. So there is a little bit of modification that I talked to with the Lossorax, they talked about using some PVC. I'm not gonna go into that. I haven't tried it, so I don't wanna say it on a video, but they said there is kind of a way to modify it, but personally, I wouldn't do it. So I think if you have a 20 inch bike, this is most likely not the rack for you. Those are your questions answered about the Velocirax bike rack. If you have any more, drop those in the comments below and I'll try to answer them in my final review of this rack, which will come in a few months after I take it on some road trips. Thanks for watching.